Hello everyone, and welcome to the Halloween special. There's plenty of candy by the concession stand, so go nuts. Because spooky season is here, and what better way to enjoy October by... Trick or treat! <sighs> Son of a... <laughs> Hold on. Fuck off, I don't have any candy. Okay, where was I? Oh yeah, what better way to enjoy October by taking a dive into the movie. So let's get... Our journey begins in the middle of a mountain pass where the main man, Donnie Darko, wakes up from a good night's rest. He smiles like he didn't just wake up in the middle of buttfuck nowhere and quickly gets his ass home. On his way, he nearly gets run over and killed by this drunk driver. He walks past his mom and she doesn't see shit. I mean, how lucky. My mom would have interrogated me the same way Batman interrogates his victims. Like a punching bag. Later at the dinner table, Donnie and his sister Elizabeth, let's just call her Liz for short, are arguing over some random shit. So Liz rats on Donnie to their parents, saying he stopped taking his medication. But the real horror here is. There's no pineapple on that pizza. Later, Donnie's mom asks him where the fuck he goes at night, but he doesn't tell her because he probably doesn't even know either. And eventually, she's all like, I don't even know who you are anymore. Then why don't you start taking the goddamn pills? And instead of beating his ass, she just leaves. Bitch. Oh shit, you've done it now, Donnie. Her son just called me a bitch. Really? Not even his dad is gonna do anything? Nah, dude, my mom would've bursted through that door with a belt in her hand and showed me who the real bitch is. After Donnie didn't get his ass whooped, he raw dogs his meds. <laughs> dude, I would've been choking. Later, when the clock strikes 12, Donnie hears a creepy voice telling him to wake up. Then we see him get up and walk his ass all the way to a golf course. And once he gets there, this creepy ass bunny is all like 28 days, 6 hours, 42 minutes, 12 seconds. That is when the world and Donnie is all like, why? But we never find out. Now that's some creepy ass shit. Back at his house, his sister Liz comes home after a night of turn up. And out of nowhere, this huge ass crash is heard right upstairs and the whole house starts shaking. Oh my God. Once Donnie wakes up, he walks back to his house to discover a big ass airplane fan thingy crash in his room. So he cheated death thanks to Bugs Bunny. The trippy thing is no one knows where the fuck it came from. They're given a nice ass hotel to stay in and their little sister is all like, hey, yo, what the fuck happened to the plane? I don't fucking know. I bet he was aliens. <laughs> So the next day, Donnie and his little sister gotta go to school. Hi, Sharita. Shut up. What the fuck is wrong with you? Donnie's friends are all like, damn, bro, you didn't die? So they give him a cigarette to celebrate. Hey, Sharita, you want a cigarette? Shut up. What the fuck is your problem? You're so rude. Go back to China, bitch. No, that's a lot of damage. What is wrong with these kids? Yo, is that Theo Vaughn snorting coke in the hallways? This baddie English teacher is reading some sort of a book, and she does that one thing that all English teachers do. Dive deep inside the soul of a fucking sentence. Like, relax. It's not that deep. Anyway, this girl walks in and she's all like, Yo, I'm new here. Where do you want me to sit? Sit next to the boy you think is the cutest. Please pick me. Please pick me. Joni, get up. What kind of teacher is this? After school, Donnie and his dad are driving back home and his dad almost kills this old lady who looks dazed and confused. The fuck you doing? Then she whispers in his ear, Hey boy, let me suck your dick. During his therapy session, he tells his therapist that he made a new imaginary friend named Frank. He tells her that Frank said, the world is coming to an end. And she's all like, you believe that shit? No, that's stupid. stupid. The next day at school, this PE teacher is wasting everyone's time by showing them this dumb self-help video about not being afraid or some shit. I'm not afraid anymore good for you little johnny later donnie is passed the fuck out so then frank tells him to wake up so he gets up and starts sleepwalking with the damn axe which is about the safest thing you can do and the next morning we find out that the school got flooded because some unknown delinquent broke into the school and broke the school's water main and i guess donnie has a strength of fucking kratos because he straight up rammed this axe into a solid bronze statue members of the jury my client here donnie darko is innocent due to the fact that they made him do it Soon after, Mullet Man and Seth Rogen start flirting with the new girl. I like your boobs. But before they can get her number, Donnie steps in to let them know that school got canceled. So she asks Donnie to walk her home, probably because she couldn't resist the temptations of Theo Vaughn's mullet. Donnie asks her why she moved to the area, and she explains that her mom got a restraining order against her stepdad because he has emotional problems. And Donnie is quick to relate because he's like, me too, all excited. He's like, what kind of emotional problems did he have? He gave my mom 28 stab wounds. So her and her mom had to change their names because her stepdad ran 
ran away and the cops can't find him. So now her new name is Gretchen. After a while of talking, Donnie finds the balls to ask her out, even though they just had their first conversation. And she accepts. Later at his therapy session, his therapist wants to try hypnotism to crack into his mind. So she magically hypnotizes Donnie and starts interrogating him. I don't think about fucking my family. That's gross. She also asks about Frank, but before he can answer her, he's reaching into his pants getting ready to choke the chicken. So she quickly claps him out of the hypnosis. Well, man is all paranoid because people are saying that he flooded the school, but Donnie tells him if he's innocent, he shouldn't be paranoid at all, which makes sense. But Mullet Man can't stand being mansplained, so he pulls out his shank and is all like, I think you did it, whispering into his ear all kinky and shit. After school, Donnie and his homies are having a debate whether or not Smurfette gangbangs all the other Smurfs. You think Smurfs gangbang? A few moments later, their gym teacher nearly kills Grandma Death and basically tells her, Get the fuck out of the way! There are cars there, motherfucker! Also, that annoying ass gym teacher starts rambling on and on at this parent teacher meeting saying why is this filth being taught to our children she feels so fucking entitled because she is a teacher and a parent at that school therefore i am the only person here who transcends the parent teacher bridge so she goes on to say that the book that this baddie is reading to her students is bad for them because it's violent and she somehow connects it to the school flooding anyway back with donnie he's taking his cuckoo for cocoa puffs medication and frank is all like don't worry you got away with it and donnie is all tripped out because he starts touching this whole different dimension and i think frank is on the other side of that dimension donnie asks frank where he came from and he's all like do you believe in time travel cut to this annoying ass karen she's forcing these kids to watch another cult video and forces them to participate in a stupid activity that is full of stereotypes she wants them to categorize a certain scenario into a certain category of fear or love but when it comes to donnie's turn he goes off on her because life isn't that simple he argues that you can't deny every other emotion that drives an action for example if i pimp slap this annoying ass Karen. It won't be because I'm afraid. It's because she's so fucking annoying. That emotion is called being irritated with a Karen. Then she's like, if you don't complete the assignment, you'll get a zero for the day. Donald. Then it cuts to him and his parents in the principal's office because Donnie told her to shove those cards up her ass, which is exactly what she should do since she's not getting any dick. Later, Donnie asks his science teacher if he believes in time travel. And it's like he's waited his entire career for someone to ask him about time travel because he explains the whole theory to Donnie on how it might be possible to travel back in time with the right metal vessel that can travel faster than the speed of light. He then gives him a book that a previous teacher wrote and Donnie's like, no way, because the person that wrote that book is none other than Captain Jack Sparrow future family member Roberta Sparrow also known as Grandma Death Later, Donnie is explaining his crazy conspiracy theory to his therapist about Granny Death and how Frank wants him to talk to her. She asks him what Grammy Death whispered into his ear that one time, and apparently she said, every living creature on earth dies alone. That is deeply scary. Donnie even agrees, because he fears dying alone. I don't wanna be alone. Sometime later, Donnie is chilling with the boys watching the game, and out of nowhere, he starts tripping balls and sees this weird bubble thingy coming out of people's chest. It basically shows the future because it's like a path that they are on, and Donnie can see it occurring in real time. Then one comes out of his chest so he follows it and it leads him to his parents closet where he finds his dad's pistol later donnie tries kissing his girlfriend but she's all like fuck no because she wants the kiss to be during a time when she's reminded how beautiful the world can be and also there's some fat guy over there staring at us what a creep. Also, who smokes a cigarette while on a jog? His parents ask Donnie's therapist what the fuck is wrong with their son, and she explains that he's probably a paranoid schizophrenic and that he's most likely daydreaming everything that he's seeing. But is he? This self-help guru dude comes running out trying to hype up the crowd like DJ Khaled. Sing it! He goes on to ramble that his friend's life was ruined by the instruments of fear. His name was Frank. Oh look, it's Crazy Steve! Excuse me, where's the ladies restaurant? I am talking to people! Anyway, a few people ask for some advice from this money-hungry guru, but he gives little to no advice whatsoever. So the boy steps up to the microphone and gives it to them straight, and he also calls Jimmy the fucking Antichrist. Oh. His principal is so disappointed in him. At this point, Donnie feels overwhelmed and confused with everything that he's been experiencing. His girlfriend Gretchen even asks him if he's okay because he's tweaking right now. All he wants is answers to the shit he's been seeing, so he goes to his science teacher to discuss the possibility of being able to see your future path but once it falls into religion he cuts him off and tells him he can't discuss this any further why because he doesn't want to lose his job so he tells donnie to fuck off okay the next day donnie finds a wallet on the ground that belongs to the phony guru guy and frank is all like now you know where he lives 
Gretchen and Donnie are giving the science presentation. They have an idea to put nice images on glasses to put on babies to help them remember their infancy. But their science teacher is all like, that's stupid. And Mullet Man suggests putting pictures of Satan. You're a fucking weirdo. But then Seth Rogen is all like, didn't your dad stab your mom? These dickheads have no chill. And I guess she gave up on wanting to be reminded how beautiful the world can be because she gives the homie Donnie a smooch right after. Later that day, Donnie takes his girlfriend on a date to the movies. But I think she fell asleep as soon as the movie started. What a waste of a ticket. Frank shows up and Donnie asks him why he's wearing that stupid bunny costume and he tells him to take the mask off. So he does and his eye is all fucked up and Donnie asks him what happened to his eye and Frank is all like, I'm so sorry. Then he asks Donnie if he's ever seen a portal and he makes one appear right in front of him. Through that portal is that fake guru's house and Frank tells him to burn that song bitch to the ground. So Donnie gets up and leaves his girlfriend all alone and vulnerable so he can go burn that house down. During this time, Donnie's school is having some sort of talent show or some shit. So this girl does this lame ass dance but then these little minions dance to a Biggie Small song. Everyone loved it and they won the talent show. But back to Donnie, he's throwing gasoline over that dude's house and burns that motherfucker to the ground. So after committing arson, he goes back to the movie theater right as the movie ends and Gretchen wakes up. So she missed the entire movie. The next day it's reported that firefighters found a Dungeon. inside the home of this fake guru so he gets arrested and taken away so donnie technically did a good thing yeah, without him even knowing later this teacher gets fired because her teaching methods aren't holy enough or whatever so she lets out all her anger and turns around to see this lonely ass loser then we find out that all those kids that won that talent show got an opportunity to go to la to be on some tv show because their dance was like super cool or some shit off of them so these faculty losers are excited as fuck but then this lady walks in to burst her bubble because she shows them the newspaper about this dude being a pedo so now they're all sad because they supported that guy but this annoying ass gym teacher believes it's all a fucking conspiracy to destroy an innocent man can you believe that shit she's now starting a campaign to prove his innocence and can't chaperone the children to go to la anymore so she's begging donnie's mom to take them because she made donnie's sister lead dancer so i guess she took pity on her sorry ass because she lets donnie know that she's heading out donnie goes up to sharita and is all like one day your shitty life won't be so shitty anymore <laughs> bro what the fuck he scared her away like a psychopath sometime later Donnie's therapist is doing hypnotism again and she asks him some questions which leads to Donnie unknowingly confessing to the criminal activity he's been doing so he basically snitched on himself he's explaining to this lady that Frank is going to kill very soon and once that happens the sky is going to open up he's losing it at this point he doesn't know if any of what he's seeing is even real or not the next day Liz tells Donnie that she got accepted into Harvard so he's all like yo we should totally get fucked up to celebrate her good news so they throw a small little Halloween party and during this moment of turn up Donnie's therapist tries calling his mom to probably snitch on his ass so i guess you can't even trust your damn therapist moments later gretchen swings by all sad because her mom is missing she believes that her crazy stepdad has something to do with her mom's disappearance so donnie being the good boyfriend that he is comforts her by kissing her and i think they're about to fuck what other perfect time than now the crazy shit is liz is all like hey you fuckers seen frank no i think they said they were going on a beer run Fuck. Dick must have been so good and made her forget about her mom being possibly dead. Donnie starts feeling all dizzy and the shit coming out of his chest leads him to the fridge to find a note. What the fuck is going on? Now he's starting to see everyone's future paths. He looks into one of these things and he hears an echo reminding him of the cellar door. Gretchen is all like, the hell you doing man? We gotta get the fuck out of here. So they all go to Granny Death's house to visit her cellar door and once they're inside, they don't really find anything. But these douchebags come out of nowhere and attack Donnie and Gretchen. Donnie's dad had once mentioned that people have tried to break into grandma dad's home to find some valuable gems or some shit so that explains why these losers came out of nowhere anyway during the attack seth rogan body slammed gretchen on her stomach causing her to lose her breath the homies are all scared as fuck over a little kitchen knife but if it were me i would have fought for my life to take this motherfucker down but what do these fake ass motherfuckers do instead they run and so does seth rogan because he sees a car in the distance and thinks it's the cops but it isn't the cops because they would never run over an innocent person unless they're protesting racial inequality Gretchen gets her ass run over by this red car. The same red car from the beginning. Donnie doesn't even want to believe that she's dead. The murderer is none other than Frank. But it's this timeline's Frank, not Bugs Bunny Frank. He's like, what the fuck were you guys doing in the middle of the road, idiot? Donnie is all pissed and pulls out his strap and shoots him in the fucking head. He then carries Gretchen back home to say a final goodbye to his sister. He takes the car keys to drive himself and Gretchen's dead body up a hill. This fucking wormhole opens up in the sky above his house. The plane his mom is on probably gets it sucked into this wormhole or something because the giant fan thingy goes through it or even if the plane didn't go through it she dies along with her kid but everything 
that Donnie has done up until this point was to simply to restore time or something to prevent the world from ending, I think. Nonetheless, he saves his timeline from ending. We cut back to the very beginning, back to where it all started. He's <laughs> laughing hysterically, and with a sigh of relief, he lays down and peacefully goes to sleep forever.